for forgiveness already before we get started. Okay, with that being said, let me first of all say good morning, Mr. Fuller, and ho- and how are you? Good morning. I'm still learning. Okay. Now, to the world, we have a special part that we do uh, to the start the program off, and it is called the Thoughts and Expressions on the Mind of Mr. Nilly Fuller, Jr., and Mr. Fuller, being that today is the 24th of October, 2023, what is on your mind that you would like to bring out for us today? I'm trying to get better focus. I think I'm focused, but I'm trying to get better focus. And the question is, focus about what? about what I'm supposed to be doing each and every day to get from where I am to where I need to be, whatever that means. And I'm getting, it seems, in my own mind, that I'm getting less focused because there's so many confusing things going on around me. So I'm trying to stick with what I have learned over the years, and that is fundamentals. Like when you get up in the morning, what are you supposed to be doing? Anywhere in the world, whoever, whomever you are, what are you supposed to be doing? I came to the conclusion many years ago, the most constructive thing from wherever you are, you can't be where you aren't so you look around you and you say what is the most constructive thing that I can do where I am from what little bit that I know and from what I see going on around me what is the most constructive thing so you just actually you can pick up one thing for sure. And that is, you're probably being faced with a problem. The most constructive thing, logically speaking, is to solve that problem is right there in front of you and that everything seems to tell you that's your problem to solve. And just about everybody is anxious to let everybody know what problem you have that needs solving. So that's what you do. And you look for, so the first thing you do is, what's the best way for me to solve this problem? Well, another thing that history has taught me, all problems are solved through the process of questions and answers. So then you find out what your questions are and then look around and start asking people, whom do I consult in order to get answers to my questions? So you just do that. So right now, my problem is to figure out how to solve the problems that seem to be coming to me directly or indirectly of just how to get the fundamentals. What are the fundamentals? Maintain or capture, if I'm not doing it, my health. And I think that's a whole lot of other people's problems, whether they look at it that way or not. Because if you can't be physically healthy, then you can't be mentally healthy, meaning healing. You need healing. And in order to do that, you have to have certain things, Uh, food, medicine, starting with that, your environment, 
if you reside in an area where it's toxic or unhealthy, just to step outside your door because somebody is likely to kill you or look what little bit you may or may not have. Just starting with that. Or somebody's just likely to kill you because they're just disgusted with everything going on around them. They're dissatisfied. They can't put it all together. They, they've reached the point where they don't even want to be bothered to even think about what's causing this and what's causing that. So they just want to kill somebody. So it happens to be you when you step out your door. They just kill you because you're there. So that's a very unhealthy situation. So you figure out who has the answers to these questions, and you ask the people who say that they have the answers. I'm saying that I have some answers. That is, put distance between you and the people who are thinking like that. That's what I know that works for certain. Anybody who's what you call looking for trouble because they have learned to like it, you don't want to be around anybody like that. And if you're doing it, stop it. Get as far away from them as you can. And if you can't get far away from them, just break contact with them. Always be doing something else because you don't have time to even your past to cross. Because if your past cross, they're going to want to know, how come you crossing my path? Or <coughs> join me in going around <coughs> asking people, how come you crossing my path? And that will lead to conflict. And I'm looking for conflict because I'm just mad. I mean, it can be all kinds of situations. Stay away from hostile environments if you can. If you're in one, try to get as far away from it as possible. You can you can somewhat get your breath and then do what next? Because you've got to keep doing something. Try to find out all the answers that you can get from people around you who can give you answers the questions about problems mm -hmm. and problem solving. That's yes, what sir. you should be doing 24-7. Wake up in the morning. i got to talk to somebody who can help me solve my problems. People in Israel, you know, or people dealing with what they call Hamas, whatever that means, you know, is that my problem? Well, I got to take care of my problem first before I can take care of anything. So, how's what's the connection between me and that? If somebody starts talking to you about it, and just ask questions, what's the connection? And so that's what I'm doing today. Anybody that ever, I'm telling people, any, anywhere you are on the planet. If you can't figure out what's going on right there in front of you and solve that, well, then ask the person who is next to you, what should you be doing? Because if you don't have figured out yourself what your problems are, problems are, and the answer to your problems will come from people who know what your problem is, and who's causing it, because that's who you're going to have to talk to, then that's where you start. But there's always something to do. And that's what's on my mind today. Okay. All righty. Thank you, Mr. Fuller. 516-453-5555. Is a phone number, the contact number. Um, I've heard it said on this program and um, 
and many other callers have said it, that the uh, tenth area of activity uh, should be um, health. <clears throat> and if you look at what Mr. Fuller has done with the nine areas of people activity, if you really think about it, using logic, actually the nine areas of people activity actually addresses health. Each one of them, individually, like a tree that has roots in it, from education on down, all those nine areas, and they affect your mental health, your physical health, social, emotional, economic, all of that. That's the concept. That's the concept right there. So actually, if you think about it logically, it does address health. Health. All righty, 516-453-9921. Let's go to Houston. Cleo, get ready. Get ready, Cleo. Okay, Cleo, you're on. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Long live NFJ and forever live logic. As always, my sincere appreciation for Mr. Bobby, Robert, Sharon, and Moon Pie, the entire CRCS crew for your ongoing work with Mr. Fuller in this very important life work. Mr. Fuller, I have two quick questions this morning. My first question is, and I'll do the second one after you answer that, if Mr. Bobby is okay with that, how does becoming our own leader in the process of ending the system of white supremacy and replacing it with a system of justice fare better than attempts to do so through forming organizations? Because organizations, what first of all, is a, what is an organization? you got to get, when you use a word, what do you mean by that word? Organization. What does the word organization mean? When do you know that you're organized? Because they say people, well, we got to get organized. We. Starting with we. We, me, we who? Starting with they. That's the first thing you say. So you first thing you ask questions about. Where, where you, <clears throat> whatever is said, that's the starting point. Well, we can't do nothing until we get organized. Who is we? Okay, so the answer is, well, we, W-E, well, well, what is that answer? Well, we, first of all, starts with, uh, upside down W, uh, uh, upside down M, so it comes to me. So me, the, getting what? Organized. Now, what does, okay, so it's me getting organized. So you start with that. You can't get organized or nothing until you organize yourself. What is an organ? A person is an organ. What do you mean by organ? I mean, that's something that you, that's an instrument that you play in a church or something. Well, yes, or it can be some other type of organ, like a person. A person getting organized. Yeah, well, how can a person get organized without being with another person? No, well, a person is an organization, one person, which is what codification is all about, one person connecting with something. Organized means connecting.
connecting. So what do you connect with? First thing you connect with, logically speaking, to fast forward, is logic. You don't organize with a person. You organize with logic. You yourself do that. Logic means how did the chicken cross, why did the chicken cross the road to get to the other side? Why did the chicken cross the road to get to the other side? Because that's where that stack of coin is. Why did the chicken cross the road to get to the other side to get to where the stack of coin is? Because chickens love to eat coin. Why do the chickens cross the road to get to the other side to get to the coin to eat the coin? Because the coin, the chicken has found from experience, makes the coin healthy. Now, in answer to the question, you first start out by organizing yourself through a code. And what is the code? The way just like that chicken figures out, get across the road. But it's not just to get across the road. It's to get across the road to get to the other side. Why did the chicken cross the road to get to the other side? To see the coin. To get to the coin. Because the coin is on the other side of the road. So then the chicken eats the coin. Why did the chicken eat the coin? Because the coin made the chicken stronger and healthier than it was before it crossed the road to get to the coin that's on the other side of the road. Now, that's a simple procedure that seems that nobody can understand until you say it this that way. All of a sudden, I mean, everybody becomes a genius. When it's laying there all the time, you just start from where you are. And if you connect with somebody else, you just tell them what you did. They say, how did you get to the other side of the road? I walked to the other side of the road. Well, why did you walk to the other side of the road? Because I saw corn over there. Well, why did you get corn? Because the corn made me, kept me from being hungry. I was hungry. That's why I went. And then the other person says, oh, well, now, that's how that works? You just just stand there and just kept looking at the corn forever and dropped over dead from lack of nourishment from the corn? No, I didn't do that. I went over there where the corn was, because that's the only way to get to the corn is to go where it is. Oh, wow, that's genius. Better believe it is. So in answer to your question, organize behind logic. And if everybody does that, you don't even need, need to talk to nobody. If you can do that, you can pull that off, walk across the road, looking at the coin, and you walk across the road to get it. Who do you need to talk to to find out what they think about the weather? Hmm. Okay. What is your second question, Cleo? Right. I think he may have answered it uh, somewhat, Mr. Bobby, but I'll, an- I'll ask him just so that if something comes to mind, he can uh, it's, you know, ex, 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 uh, he can explain more. So how do independent efforts to end the system of white supremacy differ from rugged individualism espoused by white supremacy? Well, uh, w- what they call rugged individualism, you're an individual. So you don't even have to put that word rugged. Mm. I mean, being in the... In, in in the universe is rugged. You're here. And how do you solve all problems? By asking questions. Mm-hmm. And whom do you ask questions of? 
first of all, yourself. Getting back to what? The four wants. How do you deal with them? Or questions that starts off with two questions about want. It has the word want in it. What do I want to do? Why do I want to do it? How do I plan to do it? See, that fourth question doesn't have the word one in it, but it has as its base wants. So how do I plan to do what I want to do? And then the fourth question that doesn't have the word want in it, but it's connected with the word want, What do I expect the constructive result to be? Yes, sir. Now, Mm -hmm. if we get back to this word organize, that's what, in order to get what you call organize, everybody should ask whomever they talk to those four questions in one form or another. Yes, sir. But it has to do with want. First of all, you have to be able to answer the question yourself. What do Mm -hmm. I want to do? Then why do I want to do it? How do I plan to do it? And what do I expect the constructive result to be? Okay. That's a solid Mm -hmm. part of the code. Right. For solving problems. If you're serious about solving problems, you've got to be able to answer those questions, Mm -hmm. those four. Okay. That's to start with. Mm -hmm. And that's just a start, but that's a basic start. That's a start toward getting organized anything. Start with that. All right, Cleo, um, thank you for your... um for your uh, uh, question uh, there. Uh, Fuller has mentioned many times, and think about this logically. Um, In order to uh, answer uh, the the question, there there, there is a, a, a protocol in it, whatever that question is, but you do not ask another question without answering the first question because if you don't answer the first question and then you start asking other questions, what's going to result is in what we have now, which is confusion. This is why the code is is like it is. You have to stick with the code and be codified in doing that, and you have to think logically to do that. You can't go to another question without addressing the first question. I think Fuller has said it might be a hundred questions in there or whatever. But you have to answer the first question before you go into the second. Malcolm said that the problem here in what is called the United States is that they have a race problem, and they never have addressed it. And all these other problems come up. You didn't answer the first question. So guess what we have now? Confusion. Got to answer it. It's, it's cold, period. Thank you, Cleo. Appreciate it, bro. Let's take a break here. You're listening to the Counter Racist Code Show with Mr. Nilly Fuller, Jr., and we thank you for your listenership. Get in contact with the program, 516-453-9921. Press the number one button. Get in line. Give a call screen to your name. Your question will be answered. First-time caller, Make sure that you tell them that you're a first-time caller. Give them your name so I can properly give you an introduction, and that would be great. We'll get you on. You will be heard. You can uh, also email me, as some do, and all you have to do is uh, do this. The numeral 7, Mr. Bobby, B-O-M-R-B-O-B-B-Y at gmail.com. And uh, I usually give out a symbol to let you know that I have your question and it will be answered at a time 
and I will let you know that um, your question will be answered, or if Mr. Fuller is addressing your question. Thirdly, email, or rather uh, chat room. All you have to do is go to blogtalkradio.com. You want to click on program menu. You click on program, and the program that you want is the Produce Justice Show. You click on that, and there's a little box where the chat room is right there, and you can get all up in that chat room and go from there. That'll be great. Okay, let's do this. Let's do a Gmail here. Okay, Larry. Larry, yeah. Larry says this. Mr. Fuller, I am a long-time listener to you and to the show. Mr. Fuller, you may remember me and my wife from, it's at Chanute Air Base in Illinois. Anyway... My question is, Mr. F- Mr. Fuller, is this. Mr. Fuller, do you consider the system of white supremacy to be a caste system? I ask this question because do you think that, if so, do you think that calling it a caste system better helps people to understand why people of color are mistreated simply because of having color in their skin. Thank you. From what I have learned about a caste system, the answer is yes. A caste system. Racism is a caste system. But you can call it racism. Without even mentioning caste. Or you can use the word close to caste, class. It means you're, and according to the code book, two classes of people powerful people and powerless people. So people who have color in their skin are powerless. They have less power. Less power than whom? Than the people who have power. And when it comes to color of the skin, who has the most power? Who are the powerful people? Those people who classify themselves are test themselves as white. So it's just a play on words, but words do mean something. So you just explain what they mean. And the answer to that question is racism, a caste system, the answer is yes. Just another way of saying the same thing. Hmm. Okay. All righty. All righty. Let's move to the caller. Victor, Canada, you are on now. Go ahead, Victor. Oh, hi. Good morning, Mr. Bobby, Mr. Fuller. I have two questions and a VGQ. So um, my VGQ is um, race is racism. White supremacy is racism. And um, I think that I've heard Mr. Furler say that there are no human beings. There's no human race. So um, uh, that's what I wanted to say about my VGQ. And the question is, um, I was just trying to figure out what, what power do I have as a person of color, as an individual person, what do I have control over? So I know I'm subject to a local global government called the system of racism, white supremacy. And what, what, what do I have control over? So I know I have control over my time and my energy. So the question for Mr. Fuller is, Mr. Fuller, if I, if I'm subject to a local and global government, what, what do I actually have control over? You have control over 
some of your time and some of your energy. So you use what time and energy that the white supremacists allow you to have on your own to erode and try to replace the system of white supremacy. And you do that through having a code, by finding where the mistakes are being made by the white supremacists. And you take advantage of those mistakes in them continuing to have their power. And in order to do that, you have to study how they operate, the things that they do, and try to weaken them as best you can. You say, well, how can you do that when they know what you're doing and they're looking at you do it? You just do it anyway, like I'm doing right now. They know what I'm doing. And you say, well, they know what you're doing. They know what your plans are. Uh, how can you do it? You continue to do it. You do it because you don't have any other options other than to say, okay, just continue everything like it is forever. And you say, I'm not going to do that. I'm in your prison. I understand that. You understand that. My master here on this earth. But my assignment is not just why, what you call get out of this prison. There's no way to do that, logically speaking. Is to destroy the prison. And I intend to do that, sir. You can tell him that right through the bars, like I'm doing that right now. I'm letting the white supremacists know. I'm supposed to be putting you out of business. That's my business. That's the business that I'm in. I don't have any other business other than put you out of business and then try to make the world a better place to do business the way it ought to be done, in my opinion. So I'm telling you that right in your face, right through the bars. Say, well, you ain't got no power at all to do nothing. Well, I'm telling you what I intend to do. And why am I intending to do it? Because it ought to be done. I ain't got nothing else to do. I'm in prison. Born in prison. It's working in my interest. And in the long run, in the interest of, I think, everybody, including you. And that's what you tell the white supremacists every day. They say, well, I'm laughing at what you're telling me. You're telling me what your plans are. <laughs> and then I'm going to let you carry out your plan. Well, you let me talk about it. That's the first step. So if you don't want me to talk about it, you know what to do. You've got complete control over me. So do what you want to do. Now, in answer to your question, that's what I'm saying right now. And I'm doing it while I'm saying it. This is how you do it. Mm -hmm. They say, well, your plan ain't working. I said, I know that, but I'm a steel plan. How about that? I'm a steel plan until I come up with a plan that does work. Mm -hmm. Well, keep on planning, boy. Ha, ha, ha. And so he walks away. But while you're planning, you know, you got to spend on me to keep breathing and to keep getting food because you don't know how to do nothing on your own. And if you did know, couldn't do it because I'm preventing you from doing it. That's what white supremacy means. Boy. <laughs> okay. And they tell me that every day. But I still talk right through the bars and say, I'm going to keep trying, sir. You better believe that. Why? Because what else have I got to do? Yes, sir. Uh, what is your second question? Very quickly, Victor. Um, my second question is, um, 
I know, Mr. Fuller, that the whole reason why you exist, your whole reason for being is to replace racism with a true system of justice. So uh, I also want to make that my only reason for being. And so I believe that I believe that because you've wrote the book and you've had all these folks help you like Dr. Chris Welsing and um and the and the other gentlemen, um, I think that you're putting in the foundations and the seeds for replacing racism with a true system of justice. And um I'm just wondering how do you think people of color why do you think people of color keep doing the same things over and over when they still are getting the same results that don't work? Okay. Mr. Fuller? Because they don't know any other alternative. They never tried a code. Never. In a way that at least let them knew, know that we need one. And that's what I am trying to do. I say you make an organization out of each person rather than try to join an organization. What do you mean join an organization? Each person is an organism. So whatever a so-called organized organization is, you make yourself organized. Anywhere you go, you count for a whole organization. You are an organization, an army of one. Every soldier is an army. You say, well, a soldier is just one soldier. One soldier, if you use logic, you've seen examples of that in history. One person can change a whole situation that consists of millions of people. Steve Jobs made that point. That point is made right in front of our eyes all the time. They say, well, what's so special about Steve Jobs? He's born just like everybody else. I mean, a female, I mean, you know, and comes into the world crying, Need somebody needs to change his diaper. Steve Jobs. But he changed a whole bunch of stuff. People tell hmm. me. Okay. I mean a whole bunch of people who call themselves super organized. They fell apart when Steve Jobs walked in. They said, What y'all are doing? I can show you something else. That y'all overlook. You look, stand there looking at it all the time, fooling with it and all like that. I'm going to give you another way of looking at the same thing that you've been looking at that I never saw until I walked in and saw what you were doing. I wasn't even born yet when y'all started this project. But I came along and took a look. You got other people that did stuff like that. One was named Jesus. He came and took a look. Now, 2,000 years later, everybody knows his name. He's a barefoot dude. Itinerant. Couldn't even stay on the job that his father gave him. He said, you're a carpenter. And then went among some fishermen and said, lay down them nets. I'll show you something that's, you know, open your eyes. Been looking at it all the time, but you ain't seeing it. That's in the code book about racial matters. That's the way I put it. Put it. Same biblical lesson. I put it in the code book. In racial matters, many look, but few see. See what? See what they're looking at. Looking at it all the time and don't see it. Forest but the trees. 
I can't see the forest. The trees are in the way. The forest are the trees. Felix. Oh! I never looked at it like that. That's all it is. In answer to our question, if there is a question. All righty. We're looking at it all the time, but we don't oh. see what we're looking at. Mm-hmm. And we're looking at the way out of it, if it's something mm-hmm. we're supposed to be getting out of. It's just a matter of you keep looking, and you keep looking until you what? You do see what you're already looking at. You okay. see the solution to the problem, or rather you're looking at it. Uh, that is true. It, <laughs> but But you just don't see it. Mm-hmm. Because you haven't analyzed maybe just one or two things. Yes. The tree is the forest. It's just a bunch of them. You're right. You're looking right at it, but don't understand what you're looking at. Yeah, and we've been trained. See, you can mm-hmm. be trained not to see what you're looking at. The white supremacists are masters at having people do that. You don't see that I'm stealing from you every minute. Yes. You grinning and dancing. And you don't see that mm -hmm. my power comes from you. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. But you're looking somewhere behind some mountain. Exactly. If I may just give a quick example, very quickly. Pardon me, everybody, if I may, Mr. Fuller. The other day I got in my vehicle and my vehicle is connected with my mobile device. But for some reason, it wasn't working. Now, using Mr. Fuller's example, I'm looking at it. It went through all the protocols, looking at it, and it, wouldn't, it wasn't working. What did I do? I started asking questions. And every time I asked a question, I made sure that I answered the question. And then I couldn't come up with anything. Still looking at the, looking at the screen. Went and did whatever chores I had to do. Still looking at that screen. I said, well, I'll fix it when I return back to the residence. And I'm looking at the screen, looking at the screen. And like what, what Mr. Fuller just said, the solution was right there. Here was the logic. I looked at the screen and looked up and found out that I was in a different mode, an iPod mode, instead of a Bluetooth mode. And I just simply, what, switched over to the Bluetooth mode and the phone worked. It may sound simple, but like Mr. Fuller was saying, the solution is right in front of you. You have to look at it and uh, and, and ask questions. Use logic on it. Don't panic. Use logic on it. And then you figure it out. Something real simple. But I was looking right at it, but didn't understand what I was looking at. Just didn't understand that. Wow. All right. Anyway, I just thought I would share it with you. Maybe someone can get something, or maybe that was wasn't it at all. Let's do this. Let's do this one here, right in front of you. Very good, Mister Foot. I like that. Okay. This is from Robert. Robert says this. Greetings, Mister Fuller. Mister Fuller, one of your recommended stops. For victims of racism, white supremacy is no name calling. Now, Mr. Fuller, have you ever been guilty yourself of name calling? Yes, that's why I came up with it. I looked at the result. That's not anything that needs to be done. That's not the... uh, uh, happen to solve a problem. That's not a constructive result. See, that's the punchline in everything. What's the constructive result? That's the question. What's the constructive result? No matter what you've been doing and how long you've been doing it, what's the constructive result? No constructive result from name calling. It's going to be all downhill, non-constructive. I say, why do something that's not going to work? Name calling? You know, Bill? What's 
what's a constructive result? What's constructive about that? S-O-B? Knucklehead? No. Say something constructive all the time. You're going to say anything. Make sure that what you say is going to produce a constructive result. Name calling doesn't have a record of producing constructive results. It doesn't. Call people by the names they want to be called, even if they change their name five times a day. The person tells you, I change my name five times a day because I go through different modes of thinking. This is according to my religion. I change my name five times a day because five times a day I become another person. And so if a person tells me that, I say, well, what time is it now? That would be my question. It says it's 2 o'clock. I say, what time do you change your name? From Fred to Smokey. I change my name from Fred to Smokey at 3 o'clock. I say, okay, you'll be Smokey at 3 o'clock. So when I see him at 3 o'clock, I said, did you finish the project, project, Smokey? Because he said that's going to be his name. Now, what have I lost by doing that? Nothing. What have I gained? I gained him doing what he said he was going to do. So that's the constructive result. All I'm looking for is the constructive result. Yes, sir. Okay. Name calling doesn't produce it most of the time. No. No. <laughs> no. What was the re- constructive result of us being called or, you know, certain names on this program? It wasn't none. Anyway. Uh, Mr. Fuller, we have a few minutes uh, remaining in this first hour, and I would like for you to address your book, because a lot of people ask about that. A lot of people have brought uh, your books for uh, other people. I know that Triple Eight, Reader Triple Eight has, and a few others have done that and distributed them, distributed them to other people so that they could know uh, what's going on. But uh, speak about your book for a few minutes, Mr. Fuller. Yes, I think the book will help solve problems, the problem of racism and a whole bunch of other problems because if racism wasn't a problem or wasn't causing a whole bunch of other problems, you know, why write it? If it wasn't a problem causer, okay? It's a problem solver when it comes to things. When it comes to people, it is some kind of sorry at that. So the book that I have written, I hope, can be used in such a way because I use it myself to solve the problem of what people call something called white supremacy and or racism. To try to replace it with a system that is better than racism. And that system, logically speaking, would be a system of justice which means guaranteeing that no person is mistreated, whether it's in the Ukraine or whether it's in the Sinai Desert or whether it's in Brazil or Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Guarantee each and every minute of each and every day that no person is mistreated. And number two, guarantee that the person that needs help the most gets the most constructive help. Keep those things in mind, those two things in mind, each and every day. That's what I mean by having a code. That's what I've tried to write. 
wherever you happen to be. If you get confused, and we're confused all day about something, we say, wait a minute. Is anybody here being mistreated? Anybody on this job right now? I mean, we all work in the forklift department. Anybody in the forklift department being mistreated? Hold up your hand. Anybody? And then we'll go from there. But that's the first question, and we need answers to that question. Second question is anybody here who needs help? And we're going to start with the person that needs help the most. Because everybody in this sport lift division or any job, other job you have, most likely, if you ask anybody do they need help, everybody's hand is going to go up. But then you have an order, a codified order to that. Okay, well, we tell me what your problem is that you need solved because you need help. And then we're going to see who has a need for the most help. Now you're getting the, what the code book is about. That's, that, and this is in the code book. And these are practical things. Because if it's not practical, then why have a code anyway? A code means doing something that solves something. that gets it done. And that's what I've tried to write. And you work just a simple formula. Latch on to it. Helping the person that needs help the most to start with, and then work back to the person who needs help the least. Mm -hmm. That's logical. Mm -hmm. Stick to the logic, and you can get the code book that will help you to solve problems, your problems, because that's what you start with. You can't help anybody else solve their problems without first solving your own. They teach you that when you get on an airplane. Okay. You put the child's belt on first. Why? Because the child needs help more than anybody else. Right. And then you put your seat, your seat belt on. Mm -hmm. Why? Okay. You have the most power. So you use what power you got. You ain't got all power. You ain't flying the plane, but you know how to put a seat belt on. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. We can get the book by going to ProduceJustice.com. ProduceJustice.com. Okay. And then well, you we... make, by making yourself powerful, and then you hook up with someone else, you make them powerful. Yes. And then little by little. And what you mean by hook up? You mean just having answers to questions. Answers to that's questions. All, that's right. all a hook up is. Having answers to questions that need to be answered. Right. And don't go to the second question until you solve until you get Until you get the answer to that first one. Otherwise, yeah, right. you got what we call a mess. Oh, oh, confusion. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Fuller, before we um, do the hour, or the hour does us, uh, just a, a, a question here. Um, you, you said you should address a person the way that they want to be addressed. Um, what about if, if, if a person who is a, uh, a man by gender, as far as you know, but wants to be addressed as a woman, how do you, what does the code say? To address them, how to address them. Look, that's why we need a code. Whatever that person says, call me Susan. A boy named Sue. Okay. As the song goes. Okay, Sue. S U E? Yeah. S U E, Sue. Somebody from the back of the room said, that's a girl's name. I ain't no girl. I want to be called Sue. Okay, Sue. Mr. Sue? How about Mr. Sue? Mr. Sue, yeah, that's good. Okay. No problem. Next problem. Okay. 
You take care of that right now. That's a slam dunk. Okay, so it's not Why personal. Not? This, this, this person wants to be called uh, a Sue or identifies himself as a woman, even though, as far as you know, he is a man, but he wants to be addressed as a woman. So the code he, says call people by the names they want to be called. Okay. Regardless of what okay. the name is. And that avoids confusion. That's what you yeah. said, man. Okay. Yeah. I'm my okay. own grandpa. person might say that, as the song that says it. I'm my own grandpa. Mm. Okay, okay, grandpa. Do you want me to call you grandpa? Or get that straight. What the, okay. you know, he he okay. made a statement about what he was, but he didn't say what he wanted you to call him. Uh-huh. So okay. I, that's, that's my question. What do you want me? You might want somebody else to call you about something else, so I don't know. I mean, okay. that's you. So what do you right. want me to call you? And when they tell me, I'm going to call them that until they tell me to call them something else. All right. That's all. No problem that with that. Okay, that concludes the first hour of the Counter Racist Code Show with Mr. Neely Fuller. For those who have to go, thank you. Um, for, you know, for your attendance and, and for your attention, and we've made a lot of mistakes. So please, please hit that forgiveness button and forgive it. But uh, we'll try to do better next week for you guys. But for those who are going to stay, we have another full hour of the Counter Racist Code Show with Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. Will, which will commence in five seconds. All righty, thank you, and welcome back to the second hour of the Counter Racist Code Show with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr., and we thank you for listening in. Now, to get in contact with the show for a question or a quick comment, and please make it quick today. Some people have been having two or three questions. Uh, call this number, uh, 516-453-9921, and yes, Hit that number one button so that you can get in line and we can hopefully get to your questions before the end of the hour. If you are a first-time caller, first-timers, first-timers, make sure you tell the call screener your name so that Mr. Bobby can give you a proper introduction. I do try to work hard on that, but, you know, I mess up sometimes. Maybe all the time. I don't know. But anyway, do that, and then uh, you can, when I call you, yes. You will be heard. Yes, yeah, someone said, Mr. Bobby, does that bother you when somebody asks you, can they be heard after you ask them? Yeah, it does, but, you know, that's my problem. I'll get over that. But, yes, you can be heard when I clue you or, or cue you in, so do that. Uh, you can also Gmail me at the numeral 7, Mr. Bobby, M-R-7, the numeral 7, M-R-B-O-B-B-Y at gmail.com. And, um you know, and ask your question there, and then I will read it. I will give you a um, symbol to let you know that I have it, and it will be read at a time when it, the, the, we don't have a large call volume, and then it will be read, and Mr. Fuller will address that uh, question for you. And, of course, you can get into the chat room. Um, you can get into the chat room by going to blogtalkradio.com, and... Um, when you do that, then uh, you want to click on where it says uh, uh, programs, and the program that you want is the Produce Justice Show. So you want to get that, and then when you click on that, then the chat room is available for you to get into, and you can get in there and um, you know uh, ask your question or there's statements that are in there, but don't don't use the chat room to ask Mr. Bobby a question. But occasionally I will pick up. Uh, something that's in the chat room, and one of the things I did pick up this morning was was somebody that wanted to be identified as a woman, even though this person was a man. That was the uh, statement, Rita Triple Eight. They wanted, you know, and answering your um, when you were speaking with uh, Sash Seven about that, and so I asked Mr. Fuller, and Mr. Fuller indicated we have to stay on code if they want to be called that. Uh, a woman's name, even though they are a, uh, a man, or even if it was the other way around, then to be code, to codify, you, you do that. That way you eliminate confusion or an argument because it's not personal. <laughs> you, that's what they want to be called, you know. Okay. Anyway, that's what you do. 
All right, all the books are in. Get them at ProduceJustice.com. That is ProduceJustice.com. Yes, that is their VGQ. Yes. Oh, pronoun. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Rita, for uh, checking me out. Okay. All righty, let's go to Milwaukee. And guess who's in Milwaukee? Corey. Corey, are you ready? Because I'm getting ready to go up there. All righty. Wait a minute. Uh, there we go. There you go. Corey, you're on. Mr. Fuller, go ahead. Uh, good morning, Mr. Bobby. Good morning, Mr. Fuller. Uh, <laughs> could I remain on the line, please? Hello? Yeah, go ahead. Go Hello? Ahead. Oh, okay. okay. Um, Mr. Fuller, I wanted to know if um, during, during your existence, have you experienced on a personal basis, either from a care unit member or a fellow victim of white supremacy that you associated closely with, have you found and experienced evidence of the code working to make yourself and the other person more powerful? And if you could share any insight of what that felt like or looks like. Oh, where the code worked? Yes, like what is the evidence of you dealing with a fellow prisoner in the victim in the system of white supremacy? What 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 is what has it looked like for you personally when it st- when the code starts working? I work on it every day. I'm doing it now. Uh, code just means you get something done that produces the best result considering the circumstances you're in at that given moment, wherever you happen to be. You do, and what what does the code mean simply? You do the best thing that can possibly be done according to everything, the information that you have in every situation. Don't name call anyone, ever, except call them by the name they want to be called. I've done that. I do that every day. That's why it's a code. I don't even have to think about it. Call people by the name they want to be called, period. No exceptions. And just doing that, be always courteous. Never let anybody be more courteous than me. I started doing that years ago. I've told other people to do that. Make it your code. It's your code. It's a suggestion for me, but it'll be your code if you adopt that suggestion. And that is, always be courteous, even the people who are not courteous to you. Never ask for respect. I do that. I don't ever ask anybody for respect. And I never will. As long as I have what I call a little bit mind of my own, a little bit of code, I'll never ask anybody to give me some respect. It's not logical to do that. Respect comes from what? Where does respect come from? It comes from me. So I'm asking somebody to give me something that they don't really have? I have it. Or I just give it away, whatever it is. Because I have it. I start off having it. So why am I asking somebody else to give me what I already have? What is respect? That's the question. See, an answer to your code. Code is about logic, that's all. So anytime you use logic, you are codified. If you use logic, cause and effect, in everything that you do and think, you're already codified. You're not in the process of getting that. Of course, what you're doing is saying, 
I'm going to always do and say what produces what? The most constructive result. If you just want to use the word code, that's the whole code right there. Nobody will ever come behind me and do it any better because this is the most constructive result that anybody, if they do that same thing, they're going to get that same result. That's when you know that you're codified. And so in answer to your question, I use the code all the time. In fact, it kind of threw me off by grasping try to, how do I answer that question? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I use the code all the time except when I make mistakes. Because that's when you know. And what is a mistake? You didn't get the best result. You didn't get the best results. That's right. Whether you're driving a car, if you had a wreck, all right, then you find out that the reason you had it because you were texting. Yeah, you weren't codified. You took your attention off the road. That's not logical. You were busy texting. So you ran up on the curb and hit that fire hydrant. Big mistake. Why? No logic. Weren't watching where you were going. You watch where you're going. Absolutely. That's logic. That's all. Okay. All right. All right, Corey, thank you for your um, question there. All right, uh, let's see here. Mr. Fuller, let's see. This is the Gmail here. Let's see here. Let's see. Wait a minute. Okay. Okay. Sunny, I guess. All right, anyway. This is um, Mr. Fuller. I'm from the U.K., and I wrote to you in May in regards to the new film by Martin Scorsese, uh, Killer, Killers of the Flower Moon, about the Osage people in Oklahoma being murdered for oil. Well, today I watched the movie in cinema. Everything you had said was in the movie, Mr. Fuller. The Osage came from Missouri, Arkansas and arrived in Oklahoma, which was a dust bowl with no fertile land for farming. As you know, they made a fortune in oil. In the movie, they were dressed in fine clothing and drinking whiskey. The white men were polite and extremely deceptive. The Ochich people were suffering from diabetes due to bad diet, and they were blindly taking medication from the white people, etc. I was deeply confused, Mr. Fuller, why the Osage women in the movie were having sex and marrying white men openly. Even the tribal leaders were okay with it. Didn't they want the land and money to stay in their own community? I don't understand why the Osage men let their women have sex and marry white men openly. Why was this? Were the Osage people really that naive? It was so obvious that they were being murdered for oil. I have my, I have I answered my own question. The white supremacists were deceptive, excellent sweet talkers, giving them whiskey pulling the wool over their eyes. Mr. Fuller, can you uh, share your um, more knowledge about that or wh- why I might, might have a feeling toward that? And then I have a second question. Yeah, well, the first, the, the answer is yes. The white supremacists outsmarted all of the victims. When I tell black people that, Black people get upset because they say, they ain't smart. Yes, they are. You don't become a slave. Except by somebody who's smarter than you. 
and you become their slaves. And always has been and always will be. That's the logic. And how do you become a slave? By being deceived. That's the best way. Mm-hmm. What do you mean by deception? Just that, fooling you. Doing one thing and making it look like you're doing something else. Acting like they're helping you when they're harming you. And you're standing there looking right at it. That's deception. That's what magicians do. You're yeah. looking right at it. They're the greatest magicians in the world, the white supremacists, and they're proving it. Sleight of hand. Say one thing, do another. That's something that came, I've been told, from the people who are called Indians or Native Americans. Do one thing, say another. Great at talking, you end up not seeing what you're looking at. Yes. Stealing from you all the time, you're looking right at it and don't know what they're doing. Mm Mm-hmm. I like that example you just gave, Mr. Fuller, about the magician, because my, my thought was, and I have been sharing this with people, is that we all see the that trick, and I'm pretty sure you've seen it many times, where they have a musician, a man or woman, on the stage, and they have a hat, and they pull a rabbit out of the hat. I'm sure. going to show you the hat upside down. They pull a rabbit out of the hat. And you You see it with your eyes. You actually see it. But the deception was and is the rapper was never in the hat. Mm-hmm. They 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 deceived us into thinking to go along with what you just said. Mm-hmm. Even though you sat there and you saw him or her pull it out of the hat, but the trick was it was never in the hat. Hmm. Good example, Mr. Fuller. All right, let me see. The second part of that question was simply this. This is lastly. Please share, Mr. Fuller, more, if you can, about the Osage people and their oil and your family members who are part Native Americans and their involvement with the oil. A lot of them got the oil. And, you know, uh, in what they call the Freedman Creeks, black people. Creek Indians, mostly associated uh, with the oil. And some black people, I mean, who were associated, uh, the white supremacists set them up to be the slaves of the Indians, and some Indians, in the, they, they didn't take to the concept. They believed in being tribal members. Mm-hmm. If you're going to hang around them, you're going to be a tribal member. Or you ain't gonna be hanging around them. You got to be a part of the tribe. Uh, and say, well, we got a, we're trying to make Oklahoma a slave state. So the white supremacists kept telling them, uh, no, you can bring black people among you. You, you got, they're gonna have to be slaves so that we can make this a slave state. And uh, you know, add to our numbers of where we can have slaves. But a lot of the Indian tribes said, okay, well, we'll go along with that. We'll have some slaves. We make slaves of our Indians, when we, of our enemies, when we fight among each other. Uh, but eventually, they become tribal members. I mean, the tribe is about everything. So the white supremacists said, I'm going to use that whole tribal concept against them and pick them off one at a time or sometimes five and six tribes at a time, Mm -hmm. which they did. And uh, so, yes, I knew black people who had oil uh, indirectly. My aunt was one of them on the Fulsom side, using uh, English names, which wherever the white supremacists went, they say, I'm, I'm, I'm... 
I'm not going to be bogged down with all these Indian names. I mean, some of them got 57 letters in them. And, you know, I'm like, hey, your name is Fred. And so they did that. Just, <laughs> just what they did with, with the black people. Mm-hmm. Okay, I mean, you know, and usually they named them just like they named their animals after themselves. I got mm-hmm. a dog named Brian, and I got one of them, one of my darkest. He's named Brian. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> the, um, in that area, because I don't know much about that, but I often hear this term, Miami the Indians of Oak. What 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 was is that a what was that? A, oh, that they have names. They they are, they are names that have been absolutely lost to history altogether. Okay. Uh, there were so many tribes. Sometimes the tribe just consisted of ten people, like it is now, all over the world. You go to Brazil and go and search far enough, you find some. We well, we've been here two thousand years. Uh, we who? I mean, you know, and they'll give you some name that nobody never heard of. And of course, it's just a hundred and fifty of them. Okay. And they've stayed away from everybody. And somebody knew that it was somebody over there. But, mm-hmm. you know, the land, too. The people who came through there, mostly white, and they say, yeah, we, we, are, we are aware of, of they over there on the other side of that river. It's, you know, mm-hmm. it's about 45 of them. Uh, they're dying out slowly. Okay. Know. But right. we don't need to bother them because there ain't nothing over there we want. But they're under our jurisdiction. I mean, if we want to be bothered with them, we will. You know, if we didn't even want to kill them off, ain't 25 of them, we'll kill them all in one morning. Okay. You know, that'll be a done deal. <laughs> okay. All righty. All righty. A little bit of knowledge there. Okay, let's go back to the phone lines. Oh, by the way, the number is 516-453-9921. Don't be a stranger. All righty. We're going to go to Talif. Talif, who did not go to Austin Town Finch. Uh, anybody that's from Ohio know what that is. But we're talking about the Yo, Youngstown. Don't mess up up there. That's all I'm going to tell you. Talif. All right, Talif. Talif. We're going to get you on, and you are on, my brother. Go ahead. Do your thing. Uh, anybody that's from Good morning, Ohio. Mr. Bobby. Mr. Yeah, Fuller, you have to cut your radio Grand down in Rising. the back because we can hear that. Yeah, that's my that's my computer. Okay. okay. Um. <clears throat> all right. I got. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna make this quick, Mr. Fuller, but it's gonna be kind of a question and kind of a, <clears throat> a answer and kind of a question. Okay. You say I always hear our people say, "Well, black folks don't do those type of things," like. Skiing, or and and lately it's been the suicide thing. I don't know why where we get that from. So there was a woman in Florida recently that jumped out of her car window. And you may have heard it, Mr. Bobby. She jumped into the lake. A passerby saw her, so she ended up dying. Well, apparently she must have killed her two kids. But when they checked the house, the two kids looked like they were in the bed sleep. There was no blood or anything. So they. Um, Figure she may have, they may have in, ingested something. Mm-hmm. But Mr. Fuller, I got a kind of a two-part question. Why is it that? And I know you say that the white supremacists are the authors of confusion. But why is it that we would say, well, black folks don't commit suicide. Black folks, they don't <clears throat> commit mass murders. And also, I want to ask you, Mr. Fuller, well, I've been wait, reading your second, book. Let him answer the first question first. Okay. Yeah. Now, the first question is what? Why is it that we always say, well, black folks don't do that as far as when it comes to committing suicide, you know, when it's um, mass murders? Well, I don't know where we, white folks only do that. Black folks don't do that. And so, Mr. Fuller, what is your take on that? Not true. Black people have serious problems with the truth, like white people. That's what's wrong with the world. If you want to use the word wrong, 
They have serious problems with the truth. Nobody has bragging rights according to the code. Nobody. Not one person. Start talking about groups of people. Not one person. Period. You need to be walking around bragging about anything. This is a mess. Now, everybody needs to be on that page. And it's a part of the code to tell everybody that that's the way to go. Why? Because it's the truth. Nobody has bragging rights. We've never had a time in recorded history where somebody wasn't being mistreated. I don't care who they were or where they were. Oh, well, I mean, no, we, we, yeah, well, over there, among these people, everything is, you know, don't nobody mistreat nobody. Everybody who needs help gets it. And they don't do no killing. Black people don't do no killing. Oh, well, they, 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 they started doing that when they ran into white folks. I mean, is that true? Is that true? Well, we came from a long line. Uh, I know all about, about black civilization. Civilization? That's what you're going to call that mess? That's my question. When you start saying, okay, what is this? Did, did, it, did anybody get killed during that civilization? Hmm. Did any person did any person ever kill another person during that time that you're bragging about wearing all your fancy imported cloth and all like that? Sick of that nonsense. Mm -hmm. it, why? Because it ain't true. Nobody on this planet got bragging rights. Now, some people in some religions who said, well, we've always known that. <laughs> That's why we say, and some people who's particularly in the Christian religion, that's just a given. We're all sinners. I've heard many people who say that they're Christians say that. And so you ask, well, what's a sinner? person that does something that she shouldn't be doing. Hmm. And okay. that's a simple answer. Mm -hmm. now, I mean, that's one of the first things you learn in Christianity. And then, so how could it happen that just because you go to a university or something like that and, and everything starts getting breaking, broken down in, into this, what you call, racial mess, all right, then all of a sudden we start talking about civilization. White hmm. civilization, Western civilization. Are you kidding? Hmm. And okay. this is 2023, and you're talking about civilized people? Any hmm. people who are supposed to be civilized. When was that? Because hmm. civilization okay. means nobody harmed another person. That's number one. And nobody neglected another person that needed help, ever. That's a civilization. Already? Unless the definition keeps changing every 15 minutes. <laughs> it just might. Uh, what is your second question, Talis? All right, real quick. Now, Mr. Fuller, I mentioned the suicide for a reason. Now, where would you put in the nine areas of activity? Because, and maybe I overlooked it, but I don't see it in your book, or maybe I. Where would Mr. Fuller put suicide in the nine areas of people activity that you have listed in your book? And I'm done. Thanks, Mr. Bobby. Have a great yes, day, sir. Mr. Fuller, right. and everybody else. Because I know a lot of other people probably have that same question. All right. In every area of activity. You have it in economics. People kill themselves because they say what? Well, this one that we're real familiar with. I didn't have enough money. Got tired of not having it. Didn't know how to get it. So I'm checking out. I'm always hungry. I'm always need this, need that. 
or the people I want to like me don't like me no more or never will like me or whatever. So, you know, I, I need that. I need that. I need somebody to hug me. Don't nobody want to hug me. So I'm checking out. You know, people give their reasons sometimes. And it's all because of something not going correctly in one or more or all, I say all, of the nine areas of activity. Because one is connected with the other. Economics is connected with education in alphabetical order. Education is connected with entertainment. Entertainment is connected with labor. You have entertainers who say, well, entertainment ain't connected with labor. You've got entertainers who are on strike right now. People who say, I write stuff for comedians, but I'm not getting no money. So I'm going on strike. And a comedian has to make up his own jokes or recycle what jokes he can come up with. Uh, from the past <laughs> and run them until I can do some writing and we can get a decent check for the jokes that I was writing for that super, super entertainer. Because he wasn't writing his own jokes. But he right. had to come up with them. <laughs> okay. All righty. Tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take a little break here. You're listening to the Counter Racist Code Show with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr., and we thank you for listening to the program. Uh, to get in contact with this show, what you need to do is um, call this number, which is uh, 516-453-9921. Press the number one button if you have a question or comment. And then have Mr. Fuller address that. You can also Gmail me at the numeral seven, Mr. Bobby M R B O B B Y at Gmail dot com, and I will give you a symbol to let you know that I have received it, and that at some point in time, uh, that Gmail will be read, and I'll give you that also date and time. If you are a first time caller, by the way, make sure you uh, press that number one button. Yeah, yeah, make sure you do that. I forgot to tell you that. Okay, and if you want to join the chat room, you can do that by going to blogtalkradio.com. You want to click on the program's menu, and then when you hit that, then shows will come up. And then when they do, then all you have to do is uh, hit the Produce Justice Show, and then uh, you are there, and then the chat room is available for you to get into. Okay, let's continue here. Gmail. Um, let's see. This is uh, from Ray. Ray says this. Mr. Fuller, um, Mr. Fuller has a compensatory term for God, Allah, Great Spirit, etc., which is a, which is the Creator. Does Mr. Fuller have a compensatory term? For the entity that is opposite of the creator. No. I don't know. Think about it. Because everything, according to logic, the way I see it, was created. So I say whatever created anything, something from nothing, which means that a creator creates nothing in order to have something come out of that nothing. And that's what I call the creator. So there is no opposite, whatever that means, of a creator. There are people, I guess, you can say it, and there is an opposite, and that is 
whoever opposes a creator, which the white supremacists are in the process of doing that. Because once they became white supremacists, being greedy like they are, they're beginning to show signs, particularly in the area of sex. I am a creator. And where we have male with female, I'm going to create genders that nobody ever heard of. Well, how are you going to do that? Master white supremacists. I'm just going to do it. I'll figure out how as I go along. And you are going to be part of the experiment, all you dark people, with your dumb selves. I'm going to tell you that I'm going to work on an experiment. And I'm going to have you lead the parade. I'll give you a little money. You'll be glad to do it. Because I control everything. And I'm taking on the Creator. And the Creator invented something called man and woman. The womb of man. Yeah. Well, I'm going to show the Creator and more genders than that. Hmm. Well, why do you need more? Need more because I said so. I just need something else to do. I'm tired. I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm bored. Because that's where the white supremacists are now. See, they're going crazy being bored. And they, what, what do people do when they get bored? They become suicidal. Everything. I mean, they just keep getting bored and bored and bored. See, it's, it's what happens when you become too, what they call, narcissistic? Mm hmm You begin to, actually what the scientists say, you feed on yourself. And you mm. become suicidal. And, you know, if you're around people, you know, you get that way yourself. You get around people and start making them that way, like they're doing that with black people. You know, we're getting crazier and crazier because the people who are leading us are getting crazier and crazier. Mm. The white supremacists. Mm -hmm. See, now, if there's an opposite from a creator, is that thing called evil. So the white supremacists are worshiping evil. And one way to do that is most Bible scholars and, and people who follow the Quran and uh, and what they call Orthodox Judaism and Buddhism, you know, when you start tampering, when you become evil, you start tampering with everything that you can tamper with. The white supremacists have for about 70 years now, going on roughly, really centered on this eighth area of activity. Yes. And they want black people the pioneer, you know, you can notice it on television and everything. You gotta have some black people. We ain't got no. Hey, we we got this rainbow parade. You got no black people? Go get some. Go get some over there in the homeless shelter or whatever. Get them out here. Put them rainbow flags all around them, and then march them at the head of it. I mean, they're leading it. I mean, they're going. We we we. Well, what, what, what do you need them for? We need them because we're experimenting and we are defying the Creator. We ain't got nobody else to defy. We got everybody else eating out of our hands. All these dark people, they ain't got no brains. We are their brains. So we lead them where we want them to go. And they just go dancing and grinning and bug-eyed right into it. 
like you expect them to do, like we mm-hmm. train them to do. Okay. All righty. Let's see here. 516-453-9921. You still have time. We've got a few lines open. Let's go to Buffalo. Anthony, get ready, Anthony. Okay, Anthony, did I get you in here? Okay, oh, there we go. Wait a minute. Okay, Anthony? Okay, you're on, Anthony. Go ahead. Okay. I uh, don't hear you, Anthony, so I, I think I'm calling you. Uh, Anthony, is that you? Okay, so I'm not going to fool around with it. I, I did try to get you there, but it didn't work. So let's see here. Whoops. Let's see here. Let's do this here. Gmail. Okay, Gary. Get ready, Gary. Here you go. Mr. Fuller. Uh, Gary writes this. He says, uh, Mr. Fuller, why do white people blame Black Lives Matter for things when they mostly – most likely did nothing wrong in the first place. Because it strengthens the system of white supremacy. Everything that a white supremacist does is to make the system of white supremacy stronger. They don't do nothing without that intent. And people who think like that will become strong people who center on one thing. You, any people who center on one thing and make that their mission, their reason for existence, will become real good at it. If black people believed in producing justice and made that things that when we wake up in the morning and when we go to bed at night, we're thinking about, how can I not mistreat someone? How can I be that type of person where I don't even by mistake mistreat anybody? And how can I be the type of person that gives help where that help is needed most? Help myself first so I can get in position to help others and do better, put them in a better position than they were before they met me. I want to do that. I want to be that type of person. We would get to be that type of person. But we just wake up in the morning and yawn and stand around and wait on the white supremacists to tell us what, what to value, what to do, what to buy, what to think. Because of generations of being trained to think that way. Mm-hmm. And that's why when we just sit around and look at each other and don't know what to do, we just start getting a gun and start killing each other. Why? Just because we're there. Just pass you on the street and just decide that, hey, you look like me. You look like my brother. You look like my mother. And you definitely, if you look like my daddy, who ain't a daddy, I'm going to kill you, MF. Boom. And you're dead. That's what black people are doing right now. I kill my daddy. Why? Because he wasn't no good. All he did was beat up my mama. And so when I see somebody that looks like him, I ain't ready to kill myself yet, so I'm going to kill somebody that looks like my daddy. That's why we do it. People want to know why we do it. Why we look at each other and the anger that starts welling up. I'm killing my daddy. I want to kill my daddy. Mm-hmm. Why? Because my daddy wouldn't, didn't do nothing but kill my mama. That's what he was doing. He did it slowly. 
called her names, beat her up. I had to put the pillow all over my head because I didn't want her to hear my mama screaming. And he's just knocking her all over the place. Now, why is he doing that? Because he's mad. It is daddy. See, it just goes on like that. There's a reason why people do stuff that they do. Mm. That's what code is about. Not only just seeing what people do, asking questions. Why does this person do what this person is doing? The person wasn't born doing that. Babies come into the world crying because they know that they are in an evil place. Yes, sir. That's where the logic leads me. And you can mm. expect people to do evil. That's an expectation. All of us, as evil as we can be, and walk around bragging. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Uh, who? Hmm. Um, from a Gmail, the person wanted to remain anonymous, says this. Mr. Fuller, I want <laughs> the four ones. I want to know what perceptions racially wise that you experienced in Japan from the locals, the Japanese people, compared to America, and he he said, he used parentheses, concept, mostly compared to white supremacists, racists. Well, pluses and minuses, like we all have, including the white supremacists, That's the only comparison, fundamentals, in any area of activity. All you have to do is just look at what people actually do. Yes, exactly. That's all. Japanese people commit suicide. Is that constructive? No. But then Japanese people do a whole lot of things like be very, very polite. I walked into a Japanese barber shop. Everybody stopped what they were doing and honored my presence. I found out that later when I talked to the other people who were in the armed forces over there with uh-huh. me. I said, I walked into this barber shop and they stopped cutting hair and bowed. I mean, that's their customs. You recognize every person as being somebody to be given, you know, a welcome. How can I help you? I'm honored at your presence. That's how people explain it to me. I don't know if that's true or not, but it actually happened. Everybody stopped cutting hair and bowed. And then I came in and took a seat, waited my turn. There were other people ahead of me. And they waited their turn. And when I left, they all stopped cutting hair, which is their profession, and they wished me farewell. Everybody in the shop. In unison, like in the Army. (laughs) I felt good. (laughs) I got my hair cut, and I really did. If if I tell the truth and I'm telling it, I felt kind of good on the way that, hey, they, 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 they regard people as something special. You know, you just don't overlook people as strangers. 
Welcome. How can I help you? And then another thing, I felt somebody tugging at my duffel bag. That's the thing you carry your clothes in. When I got off at Wayno Station in Tokyo. And I felt somebody tugging my bag. I was carrying it. Mm-hmm. And I looked around, and this Japanese fellow was speaking in Japanese to me and bowing. And, and I, I was saying, well, what are you doing? You know, he just came out of nowhere. But he can see that I was bewildered about which way to go. Oh, okay. And so finally I got it. And he not only walked me to the place where he knew I was looking for, where I would catch the train that I needed to catch, and he carried my bag and insisted on it. So he treated you with respect? Well, I don't like to use that word respect because I simply say uh, he was courteous. See, that's the word we use in the code. Courtesy and respect is two different things. Courtesy is something that you just do. You don't ask for that either. You don't ask a person to be courteous to you. Let me ask you this. Courteous just means custom. That's all. Okay. And different people have different customs. That was a custom. That was a custom. It wasn't even personal. It was a custom. They treat everybody like that. I'm Japanese. I uh-huh. help you. When I, I see that you need help, you're going to get help. Okay. You know, if if you're struggling with your bag, even though I'm smaller than you, I'm going to take the bag. That's the Japanese way. Okay. That's you're a stranger okay. in a strange place. I know that. You're lost. A person that lost needs help. You're going to get it from me because I'm mm-hmm. Japanese. Mm-hmm. Okay, so then, then you don't ever being be called being called a coco gene, correct? No, and another okay. thing, right. I could lay I, I could lay stuff down, and at that time it may have changed now because the white supremacists changed everything, you know. And I, I you know, I I got to the place where I got real comfortable, because I, you know, go to sleep anywhere and all like that. You're not afraid of nobody robbing me. That's another thing I noticed. I mean, those people, that was right after the war. I mean, World War II. Five years, they were beaten into the ground, but they wouldn't steal from you. Hmm. Man. You know, that's disgraceful. That's not the Japanese way. We negotiate, we we, we bargain, and, and we do it in a polite, courteous way, and uh, and we make agreements of some type in, in in trade. But steal, steal something, even from your enemy. We won't do that. That's not the Japanese way. Okay. That's the way. I'm quite sure. You know, things change, but. At that time, that was the custom. That was the custom. When I was in Japan, which was back in the 1950s. Now, a whole lot of people who are there now might say, oh, Paul, <laughs> yeah, that's old Japan. Even the old Japanese complain about, you know, <laughs> the new Japan. <laughs> it ain't like that now. Well, you know, they might hmm. say that. I don't okay. know because I haven't asked. But people who have been there since the 1950s might say that, oh, no, Japan ain't like it was. Mm-hmm. And Japanese over there now are just like white folks. <laughs> okay. All righty. Well, I'll just, this person asked a question, so I just uh, asked their question. Okay, we have a, a few more minutes to go, so you're going to take the few minutes, Mr. Fuller, if you will, and speak about your book. Go ahead, Mr. Fuller. You can get yes. it at ProduceJustice.com. Now, the, the books specifically are about, quote, unquote, life itself. 
Because if you're solving the race problem, you're solving a whole bunch of other problems, but that's what the book is focused on. And in the process of solving the race problem, hopefully we'll be solving all other problems where there is a problem in all areas of activity. So that's why I recommend the book, because it's about, quote, unquote, life itself, as opposed to death as we know it. Because we can have what you call living death, and that's what the code is designed to oppose. Well, you're supposed to have life that's different, but not called something that's living death, which is death, and call it life, which is what the white supremacists want. They worship death. They have already proven that. They prove that in the stories they write, the music, the songs, everything. And they get us to do the same thing. And so the textbook is about correcting everything at once. You might say, some people say, well, Pull, you're trying to write the Bible all over again. Might as well read, write the, uh, read the Bible. And when people ask me that or tell me that, I say, you're correct. The Bible, the Quran, and one way that I've been thinking about it, and I started to mention it earlier this morning, uh, but I started thinking about something else just before I went on there, and that is, Get books of quotations along with my book, because that's basically what my book is. I'm trying to say things that have been said in the Bible. I found out later they already been said, but I'm saying it in a different way to specify black people's condition under their circumstances now. I'm just being more specific rather than things that happened 2,000 years ago. 5,000 years ago, like that. Uh, and, and so I can get, you can get the book by going to producejustice.com. And there's a word guy there. It's all part of the same book, but it's in two volumes that price differently. But it's a steep price on both of them. And both books have flaws. Because I got them out in a hurry, and these flaws weren't corrected. At some point, I'll have to correct those. And with my typographical errors, you name it, you'll find them in the book. But you'll also find things, uh, hopefully, that will help you to what? Basically, I'll just say it upright. Solve whatever problem you've got and how to go about doing it. Mm-hmm. will help you to do it as an individual person because you can't help nobody else without help helping yourself first. That's the law of compensation. That's the law of the universe, which is what I try to use in writing the books. I try to write what is already right in front of me about problem solving. And there are lots of books on problem solving. I'm just one of them. And I describe the book usually as one of the worst written of the best books on problem solving you will find. But it's one of the worst written because I'm not, I consider myself a very, very poor writer. Try to get my ideas on paper. I'd like to get them on paper in such a way that a five- a fifth grade student in the northwestern yeah. hemisphere could read it. Okay. But that that that's that's difficult to do. Yes, sir. To write at the fifth grade student level when you have a twelfth grade high school level man. Okay. You know, well, we'll, we're gonna have to leave it there for this week, so thank you, Mr. Fuller. Thank you, callers. Uh, G. Mellers and Chatters. Um, forgive me, I've made a lot of mistakes today, but I'm correct, trying to correct them and get better, try to limit those. 
But um, forgive me for that. But we thank you for all your calls and the information that you gave and different things that you shared. Don't forget to get all the uh, books and materials, past programs, whatever, at ProduceJustice.com. That is ProduceJustice.com. Mr. Fuller, the last words of this program for you. Yes, buy the book if you can. And otherwise, outside of buying the book, try to get books that are given away or free, I mean, or whatever. Uh, any book that will help you to solve problems. And books of quotes, Bartlett's famous quotations, that's one that I would recommend. Okay. Get as many of them as you can. All uh, righty. So we hope to do better next week. Thank you, Mr. Fuller. Thank you, callers. Everybody have a good week. Be blessed. Thank you.